If I had to pick my favourite Australian animal, it would have to be one of these. A wombat. Meet Gloria. She was actually reared in captivity by people who didn't know what they were doing. She's been rescued by two wonderful ladies and now she lives here at what is Sleepy Burrows. It's a terrific place where they rehabilitate so many wombats with so many problems. Love is all around us. It's around Gloria and her mates live in Gundaroo in southern New South Wales. And Donna is the fabulous lady behind Sleepy Burrows. You know, this is a good place to be. It is. I'm surrounded by damn wombats. The aim of the sanctuary is primarily to get wombats back into their natural habitat. Tell me how it works. It depends on what wombat rescue brings into the sanctuary. And that could either be a orphan or it could be an illegal pet that's been surrendered or it can be a manged wombat. How many wombats do you reckon you've got here at the moment? Probably around 50 About at 50. any one time, yes. Where did you gain all your experience and your knowledge? From the most incredible wombat called Veg. Her mother had been hit and killed. She was raised here for two, two and a half years. She was the most incredible wombat in that she went to live a wildlife, but she visited me every single night and allowed me to learn what no human being, what no book could ever teach me. So where are we headed? We are headed into the crèche area. So what's inside all these black boxes? These are to replicate a burrow. So it's a confined space and dark. Yeah. That's the idea of these. Yeah. The reason why all the boxes are in here is because there are too many wombats coming in and not enough facilities. This is Dennis the Menace. Dennis the Menace. So Dennis... Watch out for your shoelaces and your feet. Hello, Dan. Oh, he's off. He's <laughs> off. What we do is we try and duplicate while one's running around, yep. getting a play. Yep. I try and feed another one. Yep. Who's in here? So this is Moon Shadow. Moon Shadow. So she came in at 225 grams. No hair? No hair. Absolute pinky. Look at you. She's mm. absolutely beautiful. Look Picture you. of health. Mm. Well, hello. Good afternoon. Excuse me. How are you there? Oh, 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 no, no, it's our money, kid. OK. <laughs> All this fuss on the floor going on and we're All trying to give you a quiet feed. All this fuss on the floor, yes. Eh? You like the shoes? Do you like the shoes? Do you? That's sick little skin. You don't give it to Dr. Harry. You give it to Dr. Harry. Give it to Dr. Harry. Go on, get stuck in. Get stuck in. Get stuck in. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, listen to those teeth. Yeah. Woo! We'll put you back in. Oh, Dennis. Look at little moon shadow in here, right? She's just in the land of Zed. <laughs> Woo, gotcha! <laughs> well caught, madam. Got you. You're on? Right? Yep. So we put him in here. Now, can we show those teeth? I think she's going to be good enough to show those teeth. <laughs> look at those teeth there. See those top teeth? They look like rodent teeth. They're like a great big rabbit or a great big rat. Look at them. And when they grab you, yeah, they hurt. Whereabouts is the next stage? Just outside the house area here, we've got primary one and primary school number two. For juvenile wombats, when the mothers push them out of the pouch permanently and they go out and graze, that's what primary school is meant to replicate. Once they are comfortable in primary school, they then get moved into high school where they are completely independent from human interaction and need, so to speak. University is our final stage. From university, they then go into pre-release. And pre-release is no human interaction whatsoever. Um, and from there, they're released. What do you do? What's your part in all of this? I founded Wombat Rescue four years ago. I do basic rescue in terms of 
injuries, triage, seeing what needs to happen, whether it's a euthanize or an animal that I need to bring to the sanctuary or to a vet or wherever. So, how did you become associated with Donna? I met her years ago, starting to look around where I can talk to someone about wombats. I need to ask someone questions. And I met her and we became friends. We are best friends. I've never looked to anyone else for advice um, in terms of how we approach situations because we have the same philosophy. We tend to turn to the wombat to teach us. Have you named this lady down here, this poor little wombat? She is called Moonshine. She was orphaned by probably her mum drowning after the floods. She was found wandering at the dam. So she's picked up mange and she's quite sick. She's getting better now. So you can see on her top there's new hair growth. Sarcoptic mange is a parasitic condition caused by a little mite called Sarcoptis scabii. It burrows into the hair follicle, multiplies down there, kills off the hair, moves to another one adjoining, etc., etc., etc. So it spreads over the entire animal, often in a patch here, in a patch there, in a patch somewhere else. It's extremely itchy. It's easily treated with insecticides. I think we have estimated that about 70%, more or less, of wild wombat populations in near, near South Wales are now infected. That's terrible. They are their own worst enemy. They are the ones infecting the healthy ones. So we not only need to save them, we also need to find those healthy populations and protect them. That's some burrow, isn't it? That's a beautiful one. So that's a fair nicker burrow, not like the ones around the sanctuary. This is a wild wombat yeah. that lives in there. Yeah. This is how you go about treating these animals in the wild. So what I normally do is scout an area to find where all the burrows are. I don't just treat one, I treat every single burrow in this area and I install flaps in front of every burrow. When they come out tonight, they will be getting a dose of um, Zydectin. Once this is installed, the assumption is that a wombat is in there sleeping. Yep. So when I leave and the wombat comes out tonight, they will in exit the burrow lift up the flap with their heads and as they walk through this flap is almost horizontal and everything that's been in this cup will just pour gently onto their back line yeah. in a perfect world. That's about 20 mils. Well done. Thank you very much. Well done. So how many of these have you got set up? 160. Without dedication of this sort, we're never going to beat this type of problem. So well done to you. Thank you, Dr. I Harry. think it's an amazing idea. So what's this area here? What, what actually happens here? This is the area we call university. So the wombats that come here, they can roam, they can interact, but then they can go back into the enclosure where it's dry. This is your favourite, isn't it? Absolutely. I love Sally. Come on, tell me about Sally. So Sally was rescued in December last year. I got a call around 11 p.m. at night saying, there's a wombat in Braddon. And if you know Canberra, this is the inner city the nightlife hub of yes. Canberra. I suspect that she's raised as a pet because she had zero skills. She had no idea what to do with um, a burrow and digging and that sort of thing. So I had to start teaching her how to dig and how to be a wombat. Yeah, the devil did you do that? <laughs> First thing I did is I gave her her burrow, yeah. which she occupied, she loves her burrow, um, in my wombat enclosure. Yeah. And I, um, when she grazed outside, I just blocked her entrance with soil, just okay. loose loose soil, but she wanted to get in there. Mm -hmm. And the only way to get in there is to get rid of the soil in front of yes. you, so she started digging. And I think wombats have this, they are wired to dig. I just needed to remind her of this instinct. So how's your land in the field when Sally doesn't come back one night? It will be heartbreaking. But that's where they need to be. That's where they belong, isn't it? Too true. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's been a wonderful time to be here and to meet the pair of you. Thank you, Doctor. And I just hope that you people watching at home can appreciate the love, the understanding, the skill and the devotion that people like these two ladies put into caring for our own wildlife.